Duncan Wood is director of the Center's Mexico Institute. He joins us to discuss innovation in Mexico. Duncan, welcome back to now. Hi, John. A an overused word, innovation. So maybe we should start definitionally. What are we talking about in the context of when we're talking about innovation within a nation? The idea of, uh, of innovation and innovation-friendly policy is that uh, a nation, an economy, and its people can come up with new ways to solve problems which actually matter. And they can do it in such a way as it's not prohibitively expensive. It's actually accessible innovation. So it may innovation. not always be technology. It may not always be. It could be a new way of doing things. It could be a new management technique. In terms of Mexico, where is leadership emerging? I know you had a conference here a couple of weeks ago, and I met someone, uh, Rosanna Fuentes Barrain, who's attempting to create a media lab modeled after what's been done for the last 30 years at MIT. So there's an example of a, a pocket of leadership, but what's happening within the country? Are there other projects like that? Is the government involved? Yeah, I mean, Mexico is an incredibly innovative society. If you think, if you spend time in Mexico, you see the ways in which Mexicans are able to get around many of the obstacles that face them on a daily basis. What doesn't help in Mexico, however, is all of those obstacles and, in fact, a legal environment and a, an educational environment that isn't propitious for, uh, for innovation. So what you see is that the government has traditionally not really been helping the, uh, the equation. We're seeing some signs of life at the present time. Um, our innovation forum over the past two years has engaged with policymakers to try to make an impact upon them, to try to convince them that they need to change laws, they need to provide the resources to actually make innovation possible uh, in Mexico. And, and so what, what kind of resources are needed? You know, what will it take? I, is it laptops? Is it internet access? What are the tools that are necessary to foster innovation? Well, it's a whole range of things. We talk about the innovation ecosystem, which means that it's all of the different actors, the stakeholders, but it's also the environment within which they work. So things like internet access, in particular broadband access, mm -hmm. Mexico is ranked very, very poorly on that in, by international terms. Um, investment in R&D, in, in research and design, that's something that, again, Mexico does not do particularly well on. Um, it's one of the lowest ranked nations in terms of a percentage of GDP. Um, when you look at its education system, Mexico really does need to not just spend more on education, but actually to improve the standards of education, particularly in the area of the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and maths. So what we see in Mexico is that there's a whole range of obstacles out there that need to be overcome. And once they are overcome, I think that there's a great chance that Mexican innovation will flourish in a new environment. And what's the evidence that there's a, a movement toward overcoming them? Well, what we've seen is uh, actually in the past couple of weeks, we we're delighted to see that Mexico's Congress passed a new law. Um, it's a reform to the uh, science and technology law um, as it relates to public uh, servants. And what this new law does is it allows uh, researchers and university professors in the nation's public institutions to keep at least part of the profits from the inventions that they uh, come up with in, in the university setting. Now, that's something which has been adopted uh, from US law. Um, and it's an issue that has come up over the past two years in our innovation forum. And in fact, when the bill was being read out in the Mexican Congress, we got a very nice shout out by the leader of the Science and Technology Commission, who said that it was in large part due to uh, the work that took place here at the Wilson Center alongside our Mexican partner, Fundacion Idea over the past two years that has helped to influence the debate over this law in Mexico. Well, congratulations on that. You know, we don't want to be self-congratulatory, but that's significant. It, it makes you feel good. Your work matters. Let, and, and about that, about the type of work, I want to show this to people who are, are watching. Um, and flip cover, Spanish language <laughs> as well. You, you, people can get this by coming to the website? People can get it on the website. It's available, as, as you say, in both English and Spanish. Um, obviously, we print out the books because it's a great uh, uh, presentation uh, tool. Um, as we go out there. Um, and of course, it makes a, a very big impact, uh, both in terms of our work with the public sector in Mexico and also with the private sector. I mean, the private sector has been a very, very important supporter of these initiatives um, that we've, uh, we've had at the Wilson Center to try to influence the debate over innovation in Mexico. And there's no one place that innovation comes from, right? It can come from anywhere. That's the extraordinary thing about it. If you have the right ecosystem, it'll flourish everywhere. Yeah, so, uh, uh, areas of most impact or, or most fertile ground within Mexico, where do you think we're going to see the most dynamic progress? Uh, one of the things that was somewhat shocking to me when I, I referenced uh, Rosana, Rosana's interview, she said that only 5% of Internet content is in Spanish language. Yes. 
And so there's clearly some opportunity there for growth. Where do you see the most fertile ground when you look at Mexico's efforts to spur innovation? Well, the irony on that internet point is that Mexico actually has one of the most exciting Silicon Valley projects hmm. um, around right now, which is taking place in the city of Guadalajara. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing that the Mexico is actually investing a great deal right now in IT. It's investing a great deal in software, and its software industry is doing extremely well. So I expect that as we, we move forward, then we're going to see a lot more innovation taking place in sort of the high technology level. Um, we're seeing some exciting innovations that are taking off in the area of the pharmaceutical industry, uh, biotech. And of course, with the energy revolution that's going to take place in Mexico after the recent reforms, I think we're likely to see that there will be innovations in the energy sector which are aimed at solving some of the specific problems. For example, in the Mexican shale reserves in the north of the country where there are very, very few water resources. How are we going to overcome that particular technological challenge? Final question about partnerships. We've been focusing on, on activity within Mexico. What about cross-border cooperation and those types of things as it relates to our topic? Well, interestingly enough, um, as part of the bilateral agenda right now, there's something called the MUSAIC, the Mexico-US Entrepreneurship and Innovation Council, which is a private sector uh, led but facilitated by the two governments uh, initiative that tries to bring together uh, representatives from both sides to talk about the ways in which they can spur innovation and entrepreneurship uh, in, their, in their two economies and in the bilateral relationship. And this is actually something which is very exciting because it's not particularly glamorous. It's not something which has the highest level buy-in in terms of having you know, a president or a vice president there at the table. But what it has is you have interested parties who really care about this issue, mm -hmm. and they're working very, very well on both defining the agenda and implementing that agenda on a bilateral basis. The acronym alone shows great innovation. Fabulous, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Happy New Year, Duncan. Thanks, Thanks for Thanks a lot, John. Us. Cheers.